Today, I'll be teaching you guys how to achieve the old money aesthetic for winter. Dude, I absolutely hate that term so much. I'm literally just using it for search terms. Let's change the name of it to dressing elegantly in the modern era because we aren't exactly trying to copy this style. Old money aesthetic comes from generational wealth. And unless you guys are trust fund babies, which I assume most of you aren't, we're not trying to copy this exactly because if you were trying to, you'd be rocking suits, field jackets, wearing gloves, you'd have a Rolls Royce umbrella and you'd be rocking a side part 24 seven. What we're trying to do is take certain aspects from the style and make it more applicable to this day and age. So this is how you do it. The key foundations of this style goes as follows. Number one, neutral colors. Number two, slim fitted silhouettes. Number three, high quality fabrics. And number four is minimalism. So starting with our neutral colors, for those of you that don't know, are different shades of blacks, whites, navies, grays, beiges, browns, charcoal, and desaturated greens like olive and burgundy. And the reason for this is that each color will match its counterpart or go very nicely with it. Next is slim fitted silhouettes. Now this is the downfall for a lot of people because they don't pay attention to the thickness of the materials that they're purchasing. So if we take a look at Ralph Lauren's purple label runway photos, which by the way, if you don't know what the purple label is, this is the epitome of old money styles. But even with multiple layers on, they still achieve and maintain a slim fit silhouette. Nothing is overly bulky. So you have to stay very conscious of the thickness and the fit of the materials that you're purchasing. And to give you an example of something that would instantly put you out of the aesthetic would be like my North Face puffer jacket. This is way too bulky. But if we take a look at this overcoat outfit. I'm wearing two more layers underneath and it's still slimmer than that puffer jacket. So to reiterate, make sure that you're spending money on items that are slim fit and not super thick because you're gonna want to layer with these and still maintain a slim profile. And the next rule is high quality fabrics. Now, as we discussed before, this is different types of wools, cashmeres, suede, linens, and high quality cottons. Now there is an exception to this rule because just cause you can't afford to purchase wool and cashmere doesn't mean you can't achieve this style. Cause after all, this is just a style and this is something that you can achieve with different types of fabrics. As long as you have the rest of the foundational blocks, you still will be able to achieve this style. And that brings us to our fourth one, which is minimalism. So you wanna make sure that any of the pieces that you are purchasing, it doesn't have any crazy branding on it, even better, none at all. Now, just because we are going minimalistic doesn't mean you can't deal with intricate knits, plaids, or corduroys, because those are actually key for achieving this style. But anything that is similar to a graphic is a violation of the code. You're fucking excommunicado, bud. <laughs> Now that the ground rules have been laid, let's get into what items you specifically need to build this aesthetic for winter. Starting with our pants. You are going to mainly stick to trousers and chinos. You actually can get away with denim as long as they are cream or a lighter colored denim because they can be dressed up. I personally prefer wearing pleated trousers. You can get away with really any trouser and it's gonna do, as long as it's slim. Now moving into our sweaters, our first sweater is the cable knits. Now you guys know you can get these in various different styles. You can get them in quarter zips, crew necks, sweater polos, turtlenecks and mock necks. Now I do advise that you buy these in either wool or cashmere because the whole purpose of a sweater is to keep you warm. But also remember to keep this thin because you're going to be layering with various jackets as well. Our second sweater is a thin cashmere or wool sweater, exactly what I'm wearing. These are typically worn with a shirt underneath. And the nice thing about it is it's thin. You can wear these in the springtime, you can wear these in the fall and it works and it's not too hot. The next sweater is the quarter zip. One of my personal favorites It is definitely a preppy looking item. It's super easy to style just like our thin cashmere cashmere or wool sweater. It's also easy to style in some of the warmer months as well. And our final sweater is the turtleneck slash mock neck. Now these sweaters are going to be utilized a lot within your wardrobe due to the fact that they are the preppiest item that money can buy, even by itself, just worn with some trousers. It looks fantastic, but you're going to take it up a notch when you start throwing on your jackets. That's when the outfit really starts to come together. And speaking of jackets, starting with our first and most casual jacket is the gilet. Now with the gilet, you need to be very careful. You don't want to go overly puffy with this item because you easily can. Most of these are extremely puffy and that's gonna take the timelessness away from this item. Well, you can definitely get away with like a slim nylon puffer gilet. The best options, but are often very difficult to find and can be extremely expensive are the fabric ones. The ones that are made out of wools, cashmere, cottons, suede. Having it in any of these materials is going to instantly make the item look less casual and more elegant. And the gilet is probably my personal favorite jacket to wear on a warmer winter, fall or spring day. It's 
It's super easy to style. You just put it on with any of those sweaters that we talked about before and you got a sick look. Before we move into the next item, I'd like to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, AG1. If you're somebody who prioritizes looking good and feeling good, AG1 is your drink. AG1 is a meticulously crafted blend of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food goodness that is a game changer for your brain, gut, and immune system. With just one scoop a day, you'll receive mental clarity, sustained focus, and an energy boost that lasts. AG1 isn't just a supplement, it's a lifestyle choice that supports your daily performance and promotes healthy aging. No artificial sweeteners, no added sugars, just pure natural flavoring of pineapple and vanilla, which is great for me because I am an extremely picky eater and this tastes pretty good. Within their set, you'll also get the vitamin D3 K2 drops, which you'll receive 1000 IU of D3, which if you live in a place like me where it's not very sunny most of the year, D3 is essential because you're most likely deprived and also 100 MCGs of K2. So if you are interested in AG1, click the link in the description below to snag a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first AG1 purchase. Let's get back to the video. The next jacket is the shirt jacket, which is kind of like an over shirt. You can get them plain, you can get them in suede, or you can get them in plaid. They look fantastic. Once again, it is key to make sure that this is slim fit because if it is overly big, it is going to look way too casual. To give you an example of the difference in fit, on the right here, we have one from Zara and on the left, we have one from Ralph Lauren. Now, although these look very similar in style, as you can clearly see, the Ralph Lauren one has a lot more shape, is cut much more nicely. Now the Zara one looks pretty good too, but it's just gonna be more casual. That's not to say that you can't take this to the tailor and get it altered to look like the Ralph Lauren one. You totally should if you don't have the money to buy a freaking Ralph Lauren purple label. When it comes to styling this piece, a nice cable knit, a thin one, a turtleneck, a mock neck, it's going to look fantastic. And if you wanna take it up a notch, you can tuck in this shirt jacket, unbutton the top three buttons, roll up the sleeves a bit, and you're gonna be able to expose the sweater underneath and it's a pretty cool look. Now the next jacket we have is the hybrid cardigan jacket. Now this thing is sick because you get the best of both worlds. You get a knit sweater and you get a gilet all in one. I will warn you guys though, it, these do come fairly slim and it can be extremely difficult to layer something underneath like a sweater because it is so slim. But to be fair, it does look great with just a shirt underneath as well. Now number four is the shearling jacket. Two of my personal favorite styles. You got one in the brown leather and you got one in suede. These are baller jackets. You got bloody Sean the sheep on your shoulders. It's gonna keep you nice and warm, dude. It is a sick jacket. Next up, you're going to need a coat. Now, personal preference is going to play a big role here. You can either go for an overcoat, a pea coat, or a trench coat. The one thing you gotta keep in mind is the fit. If you are on the shorter side like myself, you are 5'10 and below, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're either buying yourself a pea coat or an overcoat that stops at the bottom of your thigh. Now, if you're taller than that, as usual, you're chilling. You lucky bastard. Next jacket we have is the field jacket. Now these jackets stop around the mid thigh and it's going to be typically scrunched at the middle of your waist to give the jacket some nice shape. It has a simple functional design that embodies the sense of refined simplicity and it is the perfect blend between casual and sophisticated. Now our final jacket is the quilted jacket. Now I personally don't own one of these yet as I don't feel that it quite suits my age. Although I can definitely appreciate this item. This item is the epitome of old money as quilted jackets often have heritage that can be traced back to the traditional English country side attire. Now, if I was 28 plus, I would definitely get one of these in my wardrobe for sure. Now let's talk about footwear. And once again, because we are not copying and we're taking inspiration, I think a nice minimal suede sneaker, a leather sneaker is going to be perfect for young people who want to achieve this style without having to wear like monk strap shoes and boots. I would definitely consider picking up a brown suede sneaker and a white and black leather sneaker. These should cover all of your semi-formal and casual outfits. Now, if you don't mind looking more mature and you want to be more true to the style, then you can look at chukka boots, monk straps, leather loafers, or even Chelsea boots. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter on how old you are, you're going to need some sort of dress up shoe anyway. So any of those will do except for the chukka boots. Those are more casual. So oh, that is everything you need to achieve this style. If you guys are looking for these items that I'm wearing, it's all gonna be in the description below. And if you are in a place that's hot and you can't wear this, I've got this video that I did recently on the old money aesthetic for summertime. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, please smash the like button and I'll catch you guys in the next video video. 